I'm presenting uh, the work that Nature Conservancy has been conducting in São Felix since 2008, since 2008, 2009, uh, in a region called São Felix do Xingu. This is a map of the Brazilian Amazon. São Felix is highlighted in yellow. It's a quite big location, roughly the same size of Portugal, and it's located right in the border of the so-called Arc of Deforestation, which we have kindly renamed Arc of Green Development. Uh, and why São Felix? Well, it has huge scale, uh, uh, roughly uh, 8.4 million hectares. It has a diversity of stakeholders, so conservation units, small holders, medium and large holders, indigenous groups and uh, very high uh, deforestation rates historically, over 1.7% uh, uh, percent year, and at the same time has still very large forest remainings. And uh, the main drivers of deforestation and degradation is uh, mainly cattle. Uh, São Félix do Xingu is the municipality that has the biggest herd in Brazil, over 2.2 million heads. Uh, but also beyond... Uh, uh, cattle ranching. We also have uh, illegal appropriation of public lands, illegal logging, and inadequate governance. So put that together, we have those huge uh, deforestation uh, index that I just mentioned. Uh, and as a result, in 2008, this municipality was included in a, a priority list of municipalities in Brazil. I'm not sure if everyone is aware of this, but it's, a, it's a known as the Black List. It's issued by the Brazilian environmental ministers. And once a municipality is included on that list, it faces uh, some sanctions from the economic point of view for producing and for selling uh, the products. Uh, besides being very bad uh, press, media, which is something that uh, brings people uh, to think about their uh, current situation. Uh, the Conservancy was invited for the region in 2009 after uh, the municipality was included in the blacklist. And uh, to be honest, we were not very well received. Uh, for those of you who read Portuguese, it's written uh, in that sign, we are workers, we need to be respected. So that was the day we actually arrived in São Felix. Uh, there were like uh, literally hundreds of workers, rural workers, uh, speaking up against the visitors that were uh, NGOs, environmental NGOs, there were uh, federal and state agencies that were visiting to dialogue regarding how to get the municipality removed from the blacklist. So it was clearly uh, a social clash that was happening in that location. And a first fundamental step was the development of a pact, uh, a pact to end illegal deforestation in São Felix that was forged with many local and state and federal institutions, uh, including producers associations, uh, meat producers, NGOs, municipal and state governments. And uh, it was a pact that established goals and methods to get the municipality out of the list, which included, of course, reducing deforestation drastically. And it was also formed a commission of the pact, composed of 22 institutions that monitors the progress and make suggestions for decision makers regarding how to uh, drive the development of uh, the municipality. Uh, this table uh, provides a summary of the strategies that were agreed among the stakeholders. You will notice that the total area uh, it's 11 million hectares, that's different from the 8.4, and there's a reason for that. If you're curious to hear about it, you ask me later, because uh, we are short in time. Uh, but we have mainly settlements, we have conservation units, indigenous lands, and private lands, uh, small, medium, and large. And for each one of these land tenure types, a number of strategies were developed and are being employed. Uh, a fundamental step after setting the coalition uh, was to develop and implement uh, what is known in Brazil as Cadastro Ambiental Rural or uh, Rural Environmental Registry. It's a simple concept. It's like an ID of a property. So I have my ID, my passport. It has my number, my picture, where I live, where I was born, and so on. So the same concept applies to a property and has the ge geographical boundaries of that property as well as an assessment of the environmental conditions of that property uh, against the current Brazilian legal framework or uh, the legal, uh, the forest code. And, 
And why is this so important? Uh, because it allows the deforestation attribution. So it's no news that Brazil has a good monitoring uh, for deforestation in place that is uh, almost real time, so there's the deter, there's the produce. So we've known for many years where deforestation is happening and how big it is, but we could not as a country identify who was responsible for that deforestation. So by linking the data from produce, the deforestation data, with the data from the uh, land registry, we're now able to uh, make an overlap and identify the responsibles and provide attribution to whomever is uh, complying or not with the uh, legal uh, environmental legislation. And this graph indicates the evolution of CAR in the municipality. Uh, the lighter uh, line indicates the area which has been put inside the public system, the monitoring system of the land registry, and in the darker line indicates the number of properties. So we have roughly 3.8 million hectares in the system and over 7,000 uh, properties included in the system in that single municipality. This was a response, if you will, of the deforestation over the years. So it had over uh, 79, roughly 80% of reduction from the average of, of uh, years before. Uh, however, the command and control is not enough. It has short life. Uh, the usual cycle of opening uh, forests in Amazon, especially when you're dealing with the cattle ranching, is that you open the forest, you put grass, you use it for five, seven years without any sort of management. The soil gets degraded, the pasture doesn't grow anymore, the producer moves to a new area in order to maintain his livelihoods. And, uh, to address that, we put together uh, a project, or an initiative that is a, a bunch of projects together called uh, uh, Sustainable Beef from Farm to Fork and includes uh, big players of the issue such as Marfrig, which is a second largest beef industry in Brazil, uh, one of the biggest also in the world, and also Walmart. So we're dealing with different aspects of the production chain to enhance uh, the way uh, cattle ranching is done and also to improve the policies of the companies that buy the production in order to uh, remove the illegal cattle or cattle related to uh, deforestation. And that's mostly for medium and large producers or landholders because they're the one who grow the, the, the cattle fat. Uh, we're also dealing with the smallholders, mainly with cocoa. Uh, also. Uh, working throughout the production chain. In this case, we're working with a local cooperative, with the Cargill, which is a, the, a very big buyer of cocoa seeds, and uh, state agencies that provide technical support for uh, local hand, local uh, food producers, cocoa producers. And the idea is to use cocoa as a uh, as a crop to restore degraded lands, in addition to be an alternative for a, a ranching, is also being used to restore degraded lands. Uh, and also, smallholders take part in the cattle chain production by producing the calves. So the smallholders produce the calves and pass along to the medium and larger. So we're working with different uh, stakeholders within the same supply chain as well. And uh, we have a jurisdictional approach, so we're looking not only the private lands, and there are many indigenous lands in that location, um, and we're working mainly with two of those lands, uh, Trincheira Bacajá and Apiterewa, and uh, basically following uh, what the recent Brazil National Policy for Indigenous Lands Management mandates, which is to develop management plan for indigenous lands to support uh, sustainable development, conservation, uh, and, and petroleum, and so on. And uh, uh, so we, we implemented that, and also developing agreements between the indigenous groups and the farmers and ranchers which are surrounding them. Historical conflicts are uh, high in that region, but we've been able to provide some good examples of a good neighborhoods among farmers, ranchers, and indigenous folks, as well as uh, big companies that are uh, locally operating, uh, mainly miners, uh, huge uh, mining companies. Uh, we're providing a guide of good business practice for companies whenever their business relates to indigenous folks. And one, it's a conceptual work, but one of the locations where the concept is being applied initially is in that location related to the mining sector and, and ranching as well. Some of the major challenges, uh, 
So we need to consolidate the multi-stakeholder approach, mainly regarding indigenous participation. There is a commission that includes the diversity of uh, stakeholders locally. Uh, indigenous participation is still weak, so uh, in order for us to have a real territorial approach, uh, we need to reinforce and make sure there is a proper indigenous preparation and uh, officialize, if you will, some forms of governance that include the diversity of stakeholders locally. Uh, also, uh, what we call social deforestation is the deforestation that comes after uh, family agriculture for, subs, uh, for subsistence mainly. It, uh, last year, it accounted for uh, roughly 50% of the overall deforestation in São Félix, and it's characterized by small plots of deforestation, deforestation less than 10 hectares. And that, uh, the, o the, the overall uh, social deforestation contribution to São Félix has remained somehow stable over uh, the past decade. So we have an overall decrease of deforestation, but the parcel, the contribution of social deforestation has somehow remained stable. And so that's a huge uh, challenge and many, many more producers than the large ones and uh, a number of strategies to deal with that. Uh, the command and control or the land registry system, it's a great thing, but it's not done, it's not finished yet. So there's still a lot of capacity need to be installed to monitor and, and monitor progress and, and local capacities, regulations. So it's not done. So it's again a, a big challenge. Uh, the strategy of improving ranching and cocoa as conservation strategies, for some people, it's sort of natural approach, but for some others, especially some uh, government agencies, but also donor agencies, is sort of a new. So we need to ensure we have uh, efficiency demonstrated in order to advance uh, that agenda further. Uh, land titling, again, uh, aligning with the results of the study. Uh, it's a big bottleneck because uh, in order for producers to make the transition from the current a production system of cattle to the new one, more sustainable, uh, there must be uh, capital available for them. Capital comes from the credit lines. Credit lines demand land tenure titles. Those producers don't have the titling. It's a big problem in the Amazon as a whole and that's in region as well. So without the title, it's hard to access the credit. So we need to solve the credit and the land issues together. Uh, once we have solved that, we need to have capacity to implement uh, technical systems for improved techniques at scale. This is not available yet. And finally, uh, solve environmental, uh, I miss an over there, uh, inv solve environmental liabilities at scale, either by restoration or compensation. Uh, that's it, what I had for today. Thank you so much.